In Spark Streaming, there are two kinds of operations we can perform on DStreams, transformations and output operations. Among the transformations, there are stateless transformations, which we're going to discuss in this section, and stateful transformations, which we'll talk about later. Transformations, just like in non-streaming Spark, are lazy. They're evaluated lazily. Defining them doesn't cause any work to take place. Output operations, though, which are equivalent to actions in conventional Spark, do trigger computation. A stateless transformation is stateless precisely because it doesn't depend on any other batches in a D stream. As we can see here, the input stream is divided up into four RDDs. Those are run through some stateless transformation, and we have a transformed D stream, which is also composed of four RDDs. And there's a one to one correspondence between each one of those output RDDs and the input RDD in the D stream from which it was transformed. Let's take a look at a few of the basic stateless transformations that you can perform on a DStream. These look a lot like the transformations we've seen from the rest of Spark. We have filter to which we pass an anonymous function and that function will select which elements of the input DStream will make it into the output DStream. There's map, which allows us again to provide an arbitrary function, which transforms each element of the input into an element of the output. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between those elements. Flat map is similar, except it expects that the input elements may themselves be broken down into pieces. So there's a one-to-many correspondence between the input elements and the output elements. We would expect flat map in the general case to return many things having given it one thing. We saw that used before in our word count example where we took a line of text and tokenized it on spaces. Count is now a transformation in Spark Streaming. It's going to take every RDD, every batch in a DStream, count up the elements in it, produce a new RDD containing just that number, that count of elements from the source RDD. Count by value is going to do a similar thing, except it will take distinct values in the source RDD and count them, creating an RDD that has a record for each distinct value and a count for that value. Reduce will apply a function to every element in the input, producing an aggregate of some kind in the output RDD. And finally, union, which is actually a binary operation, will take another RDD and produce an output RDD that's the union of that batch in the source RDD with the other RDD that you pass into union. Spark Streaming gives us a new and slightly lower level API called transform. Transform is a method we call on a stream and we pass it a function. That function is gonna get passed a parameter which is an RDD. Every RDD, every batch in a DStream will get passed to this transform function where we'll be able to operate on that RDD with the RDD API at our disposal. Anything we wanna do, we can do it inside that transform function. Transform with is gonna do the same thing. We'll pass it that same function. It's gonna take an RDD as an argument, except we'll also be able to pass in another RDD. This is basically like the binary transform version of transform. Let's work through some examples. We're gonna start with diagrams, really, because this stuff's fairly abstract. I wanna walk through just some pictures of what we're doing with streams and other data sources to make the stuff clear before we jump into the code. Here we have an input stream shown in the top on purple. It's labeled input D stream, comes through that receiver. And what we have is a series of UUIDs. We're gonna assume those are movie IDs from our movie database. We're gonna perform a transform on that D stream, which is count by value. And now we're getting a count of unique IDs in that second RDD shown in blue in the middle. Then we want to join that with data from a Cassandra table. We want to augment that stream with actual metadata from our movie database. So we're getting this stream of movie IDs coming in and we want to decorate it a little bit with some more information that we have in our database. This is a classical Spark streaming application. And here is the code. Let me walk you through it line by line. We begin by making our streaming context, assuming our configuration is already lying around, and we use socket text stream to pull in those movie IDs. We're kind of eliding the rest of the details of the system, assuming that those UUIDs are coming in as text from that input source. Next, we'll query the Cassandra table. We're gonna get the metadata we need from the movies table and make sure that's keyed by ID. So we'll be able to join on that by ID. We'll try to be a little bit smart with the partitioning as we learned in the section on controller partitioning and we'll persist that in memory. Finally, we're gonna define our stream computation itself. We wanna use the transform method 
Why transform? Because we want to join a stream, not to another stream, but to a conventional RDD created from a Cassandra table. We're effectively joining a stream to a table. We can only join that Cassandra table to another RDD. So we have to do that inside the transform function, which gets passed each batch RDD in the D stream. You can see that happening on that last line where each RDD is joined to movies and then mapped into a result tuple that has the format we'd like. Now, if you have D streams of pair RDDs, the APIs for transforming these look very much like the pair RDD transformations in conventional Spark. We have map values, flat map values, reduce by key, group by key, combine by key, all of those same APIs that we have from before. And also, of course, co-group, join, left outer join, and right outer join. Now, we said just in the last example that we had to use the transform method to get that join done. Spark will let you join one stream to another stream, but you can't join a stream to a non-stream RDD. Let's look at an example, again, just by diagram first, to make sense of the situation in the abstract of how to join two streams to each other. Afterward, we'll look at the code, which is incredibly simple after we've gotten the concepts in our heads. On the left, we have an input stream coming in, which contains, again, movie IDs. On the right, we have another input stream, which contains movie IDs. You can see those are being broken up into discrete batches of data, in this case, every four seconds, based on the period we picked for our example code. Then we'll apply a transformation to those, which looks like we're counting them by value. We're going to count up the number of times each movie ID occurs uniquely in each batch RDD. Then we will join the two streams. We're going to join them on their key. These are pair RDDs at this point, so that's fairly simple to do conceptually. We'll join them, and we see the output of the join contains the key and now a tuple of the two counts, which we'll have to reduce add those two counts together. And finally, at the output, we're going to have count of the number of times each ID occurs uniquely. Now, why all this complexity? Why would we even have two streams? Well, there are a number of reasons why that might happen. Number one, the data rate coming in on one stream might simply be too high. Remember, a receiver is a task, which means it's one thing that runs on one executor. It's possible that that one server could be overwhelmed by the rate of data coming in, and you might need to split that work up among more than one worker. So you might actually need to define multiple streams in order to scale. It also may be the case that the data is not all available from one source. You may have different regions globally that have separate information systems where you have to connect to each one of those regions, separate servers, separate parts of the world, each of which will stream its own data. And you want to provide a global aggregate of all of those regional rollups. There are any number of other reasons why you might need to go to separate sources. In trivial examples, it's well and good to have a single fire hose with all of that data. But in the real world, you might have to do something like this. And now, as I said, the code is frankly pretty simple to wrap our minds around. We'll create a streaming context. We'll create the two streams, again, text streams from, as it turns out, the same host, different ports in this example. And we will count the one by value, just as it did in the example, and then join it to the second stream, also counted by value. That joined stream, we will map values, adding them together. That's effectively a way of reducing that tuple into a single scalar value. And finally, print the result. 